Hello, it's John Passmore with Old Man Sailing and welcome from the Canary Islands. It's New Year's Day and as you can see, the sun is shining, it's 25 degrees and I'm in Las Palmas. So if you can hear some background noise, that's because you've got the main road over there and on the other side of the harbour, you've got the port where there's always something making a noise. But I just get used to it and besides, where else in the world can you anchor right in the heart of a capital city for one euro 40 a day? It's just astonishing and it's a lovely place. The reason for giving a, giving a, a check-in today is because it suddenly dawned on me that there are five things on this boat that I simply wouldn't be without. Things that I never thought I would need but I've been living aboard now for coming up for seven years and I think I've got a handle on it. So you might want to know about these things. They, all of them, use electricity. So first of all, let's give you a tour of the electrical charging facilities. I have an 80 watt solar panel, which is doing very well today. I've got a wind charger, which of course is doing absolutely nothing because in the winter in the Canaries, you don't get much wind. But I have also got 120 watts of solar panels, which I got at the boat show, and they've turned out to be brilliant. So they go on deck when the weather is okay. So all of these things use electricity. The four, five things that I talk about. First of all, a car charger. Sorry, not a car charger, a car electric kettle. Literally, it is a, an insulated mug with an electrical coil in the bin. And you plug that into 12 volt electricity and in about 20 minutes, it will make a cup of water, bring it to 95 degrees centigrade and keep it at 95. So when I've got surplus electricity, which when the wind charge is going, I certainly have, I just keep that thing going all the time and I've got constant hot water. Moreover, if you have read Old Man Sailing, and we never to pass up the opportunity to give it a plug, there it is. Uh, at the moment, it is discounted to 99 pence on Amazon, so do go and have a look quickly. And uh, that's just January sale, I imagine. And uh, in there, I explain what happened when I had a gas leak on the way back from the Azores. It meant no cooking, no cups of tea, but if I had had my little electric kettle, no problem. So it is an insurance policy as well as saving gas and giving you that lovely glow of getting one over on the energy industry. Next up is this. This is a rechargeable vacuum cleaner. Now you think, what on earth do I need with a vacuum cleaner on a boat? Massively useful. You see, if you're living aboard, you cannot have those beautiful striped holly and mahogany varnished floors in your cabin because you're gonna be walking up on down and down on them 24 hours a day or 12 hours a day maybe, every day. And in no time at all, that varnish is just gonna be ruined. And if you try and varnish a floor, you've then gotta get off the boat while it dries. So carpets are the answer and I used to clean them with a stiff brush and a dustpan. Very simple. The trouble is the dust would simply fly everywhere. So this is brilliant. And also, every time I drill a hole in the woodwork for cables and pipes and what have you, all that detritus that would normally go down into the buildings and block everything and make a mess, they all get sucked up. Every time that I'm sandpapering, I use the vacuum cleaner massively useful wonderful now the next thing is because we are in winter uh, we the Sun although it shines beautifully and gives us 25 degrees and what have you it doesn't come up until half past eight in the morning because amazingly although we're 17 degrees west of Grange we're still in the same same time zone don't know how they work that out anyway it gets dark at half past eight and it doesn't get light again uh, sorry, it gets dark at half past six in the evening and doesn't get light again until half past eight. So there's 14 hours of darkness. 
And uh, if I was relying on the batteries, they would pretty soon go flat. But I've got these. These are a pair of rechargeable electric lanterns. And I've got a series of little brass hooks. I think I've got five little brass hooks all over the cabin. And I simply move these things around wherever I want them. And they're just, just great. And I charge them up in the daytime when there's masses of uh, electricity going spare. So the next thing, more electricity again, is my fridges. Now note that I don't say my fridge. I say my fridges in the plural. Ha ha, this is a real surprise. What happened is if you've been reading the blog, you will know that I got knocked down on the way here. I met one of those very large waves. If you haven't read it, do have a look. It's on the blog, oldmansailing.com, and it's called Knockdown. So oldmansailing.com forward slash knockdown. And uh, as a result, uh, everything ended up on the floor and the fridge ended up upside down in the bilges, uh, pretty much underwater actually. And uh, this is, uh, I was very pleased with it. It's, it's new this year. Uh, it's an Alpicool compressor fridge. And before that, I used to have one of those tiny little things you designed to go in the car, which is fine because the car's engine is always running. But uh, this only comes on when necessary. And I have it set to nine degrees. There you are, there's this little control panel. Nine degrees, it says. And uh, that will stay. It'll keep the beer cool. It'll keep the um, jar of beans going for four or five days. Um, gherkins don't go off in it and things like that. I don't eat meat and fish, so I don't have that problem. But I would say in, in the tropics, a fridge is a good thing, if only because there is nothing more wonderful on a hot day than a cold beer. So, there is my fridge. But it ended up upside down, and as the instructions say, do not invert. So I was not surprised when afterwards it didn't work. So I sent off for another one. That one didn't work either. Because, as I discovered, the problem was not the fridge itself, but a broken connection in the little plastic block where the wire plugs into the socket on the fridge. So, I had two fridges which actually did work. And I was explaining this to my cousin Sophie, who is the, sh the cook on a Oyster 885, that's nearly 90 feet. She's got five fridges. And I, I told her, well, I'd only got my one little fridge. And she said, but you need a salad fridge. I looked at her as if she was completely mad. I mean, on a 32 foot boat, I need a salad fridge. Oh yes, I need a salad fridge. Because you see, I now had a spare fridge and what was I gonna do, try and sell it at half price? No, I stick it up here. There is the salad fridge. Now this one, as you can see, there it is. Um, this one is set to, where are we? 17, it's saying 17 at the moment. It actually averages 16. And uh, the ambient temperature up here is probably around 20. So it, is, it hardly runs at all. So it's saving a massive amount of electricity, but it will keep the few things that just need to stay cool, not cold. And what have we got in here? We've got, uh, we've got the bread. Now, you know, in the hot, hot climate, if you don't keep the bread at least cool, it, it goes off in no time at all. I've got some tomatoes in there. I've got a cucumber. I've got a piece of cheese that I got for Christmas. So, and the other thing, of course, is if I really am short of electricity, I can just turn that one off. And it's, it's not gonna be a disaster. Uh, and the other one can keep running. Now, the last and the most surprising of all was the water maker. Well, it wasn't such a big surprise because I went down to the Caribbean to see whether I needed a water maker and a fridge and all this sort of stuff. And I decided that I would love to have a water maker because you have to buy the water in the Caribbean and that would be all right if it was good water, but it's not. In three days, it smells of bad eggs. It's rubbish. So everybody has water makers. Now I thought I'd never gonna find room for one, 
but there is a long expl explanation of the water maker in the on the blog uh, look for oldmanselling.com forward slash water makers in small boats i think it's called so there's the water maker let's turn it on because we've got 12.7 volts and we can afford to run it so i've turned it on the pump in the bilges is going and uh, here it is and there uh, yeah there we go now once the the bunk cushion is over the top you hardly hear that and in fact what i have to do is set an alarm to check uh, when it's full because the first i will know is when the uh, the galley tap starts producing water because the tank is full and uh, because i have a pump to empty the sink because if you're on starboard tack it won't empty otherwise uh, and i don't run the pump <laughs> then that will overflow so there you go there is everything where are my sunglasses uh five things that i wouldn't be without and even if you've got a very small boat you might like to consider those so there you go and uh, as you can see there's the water maker producing bubbles because that is the the brine coming out because the uh, you have to keep constantly wash the 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 salt off the filter now uh, so that only the fresh water goes through wonderful stuff technology isn't it so there you go meanwhile don't forget the blog oldmanselling.com where and there's also a podcast the old man selling podcast there's the youtube channel well you've got that because they are seeing this on it and the books there are now seven books in the old man sailing series so do go along and have a look until the next time thank you very much